magic, storms, the sea, mermaids, poaching. What do you expect to happen when you are given these words? The story of Puraka is one permutation of what can come out of these words. Puraka is a book and audio book by author D.L. Gardner, who I am actually getting to record for, for doing the Ian's Realm Saga trilogy for. So if you have read the Ian's Realm, you might enjoy Puraka and vice versa. I'm giving it a four star out of possible five star and rating it from middle grade to young adult. Now I have sat with this one for a bit as I wanted to process it more, but I also forgot to actually sit down and write out my review of the story. And then I didn't get a chance to actually record my review of the story for posting it on the YouTube channel. I listened to the audiobook while I was doing illustration work and chores, which made for good company. As I love tales of the sea and the denizens thereof, I knew that this was going to be an interesting experience. Dolphin hunting, which is already illegal, impinges on the magical abodes of the Murs. Poachers, of course, are a real-world threat, and I can see how they would be a threat to the Mur people. And even more so, when we discover that the Murs are related to dolphins. Going by old tales, they are also related to humans, but that still removes no stigma from any myrrh to human pairs, which gets addressed later on in the story. This particular reclusive pod of myrrhs is then forced to abandon the magical pool which sustains them and to search for another area containing the magical waters that they need. This exodus then brings the highly reclusive pod into contact with another mostly xenophobic pod. Taz, our hero, meets with Korra as a result of this and gets introduced to shape-shifting magic, something he never needed nor known even existed due to the way his pod had once lived. This story tackles some sticky elements that even in the world need addressing. Xenophobia, pollution to a minor degree, poaching, ocean health, interracial relationships, now I am viewing Murs as another part of the race of man, as one can assume them capable of interbreeding and due to the old legends. Whether or not to get help or to take matters into one's own hands is another issue that is dealt with in this book. These are all things that are good to use the medium of fantasy to address and the choice of setting being contemporary brings these matters into more immediate focus than they would perhaps be if they were set within the age of sword and sorcery. The story gets a little bumpy at times due to the pacing. The dialogue is a little stilted for some, but it is fitting for the more introverted and introspective characters. It is less stilted for the female characters who are fewer and definitely more outgoing than the males are. The males are far more brusque than the females in this book, which I could expect to come out of a society that avoids humans and often has to defend itself. And with the society of the Murs, or at least these two pods, being male dominated, very different than on land. There are other dangers in the sea that are not addressed as much due to the prominence of the problem of humans. I expect future books to expand on these. I want to know what happens beyond the end of this, especially as a bit more magic leaves the world when more mers are changed forever into dolphins and no longer living in between land and sea as a balance point. I personally enjoy this book very much. Somebody else might not enjoy it because of the way it was paced. At times it was a little slow for me, but I could see why it was being slow because there was a lot that had to be developed. Also, there is a bit of romance, but the romance is not the main point in this. So if you're reading this for a romance, you're going to be disappointed. If you're reading this for an adventure, it might not fully fit. But if you're reading it for the 
the balance between human and the murders for the the balance of fantasy versus realism then you're going to be more intrigued this is definitely a journey book it is a growth book both for Cora and for Taz and it hurt to listen to what was being given up at the end so if this sounds interesting to you please do go and get a copy and I will talk with you in another video if you're interested in my book reviews in my stories in my personal news as to what is all on my creative plate please feel free to subscribe also feel free to like and to share and I wish you adieu for now